Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Remembrance Day as we remember my friend Dr. Lamb and the 70th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima. I will be the Master of Ceremonies this morning, and I also will be a presenter. To start our program off, please welcome the Mayor of Lewiston, Carl Schilling. Good morning, and thank you all for coming today to commemorate Hiroshima Day and Dr. Bernard Lamb's important work in the pro-peace movement. I'm honored to be here as we all contemplate and reflect on Dr. Lamb's life of service. Just a few steps from here, the Peace Bridge stands as a symbol of Dr. Lamb's brilliance and deep commitment to others. As many of you know, his life work included the invention of the defibrillator and his advocacy for all people and his perseverance as he worked toward a, free, a world free from the dangers of nuclear war. Our gathering today recognizes and underscores how critical it is that we continue Dr. Lowndes' life's work. This is especially important as we look toward a world where peace and safety is possible and prioritized and where nuclear weapons have no role in our children and grandchildren's future. I would also like to thank Alan Harvey who, along with Lewiston Mayor, the Honorable Larry Gilbert, and State Senator, the Honorable Peggy Rotendo, led our community to honor Dr. Lowndes by naming the Peace Bridge. I'd also like to thank Dr. Doug Dransfield, Dr. Ted Walworth, Danny Dreher, and Fred Broder for being a part of today's program. Thank you all again for being here. It's truly an honor to welcome you to this important event. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When I first met Dr. Lown, uh, as a Bates graduate, I was attending the commencement and he was being given an honorary degree from my college. It was then that I found out that he had received the, the, the uh, co-reception co of the Peace Prize and he always referred to it as the prize. I wanted to find a way to honor him, and I thought about this for a long time, and one day I was driving across the South Bridge, and I thought, well, the North Bridge is named after Jim Longley, and I come up with the idea that we could name this bridge in, in his honor. Uh, I recruited Larry Gilbert to assist me with that, and Larry became a, a force in that as he became a very good friend of uh, Dr. Lowndes as well. We're also here today to remember the heroism of our veterans for peace and the uh, bombing of the 70th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima. At this time, please welcome, I call him my bridge partner, uh, former mayor and Chief of Police of Lewiston, Larry Gilbert, Sr. Good morning, everyone. And I'm here with my granddaughter, uh, Kendra, and uh, her twin brother, Alex. Alex sitting there with my wife and my brother. My brother, my big brother, and my daughter, Karen, there. So this morning, Kendra says, Pepe, can I go stand with you? I said, sure. <laughs> so here she is. She's going to be an activist. <laughs> Yay, good. Um, Al Harvey. Dr. Lown called him the instigator because <laughs> it was his idea to name the South Bridge in honor of Dr. Bernard Lown. And so let's give Al a round of applause. Al was humble because he said he attended Bates College, but he was also a track star Ooh. at Bates College, and he's in the main sports hall of fame. And I think he still has records that have yet to be broken. And it was on a Saturday at an indoor track meet at Bates College and uh, Al approached me, I was mayor at the time, and he said, 
there's a South Bridge, and I heard Dr. Lowndes speak at a commencement ceremony, and he says he's a 1938 graduate of Lewiston High School, one of our boys, okay, who went on to develop the defibrillator, uh, and uh, you'll see in the video, you'll see some more of what Dr. Lown did during his life. So uh, anyway, I said, give me the information. So uh, he, he had a, a, a manila envelope and he gave it to me. And I also did a little Wikipedia search. And he had attended uh, the University of Maine, Orono. So how do I find this doctor? So I called the Alumni Association, and sure enough, they had his address and phone number. So they gave it to me, and I called the number, and this elderly lady answered, because I didn't know if Dr. Lam was, was alive or not. He was 86 at the time. And uh, she, I said, may I speak to Dr. Lowne? She said, just a moment. And he came to the phone, and I told him who I was, and that we wanted to, we wanted to ask his permission uh, if he would allow us to name the South Bridge in honor of, of him. Do and we wanted to name it the Dr. Bernard Lowne Peace Bridge. And he says, drop the doctor. But he says, I'll be honored. And so it went from there. Then we continued uh, our discussion. So I noted that his birthday was June 7th, and my birthday is June 7th. And that he had, I asked him, he had, you know, if he had children, he said he had, he had two daughters and a son. I have two daughters and a son. His wife's name is Louise. My wife's middle name is Louise. So he, being Jewish, from Lewiston, where there are so many Franco-Americans, especially at that time, I wanted to know if he had married a little French girl. <laughs> and so I asked him, how did you meet your wife? And he said, oh, that's a long story for another day. I still wanted to know. So I said, well, what was your wife's maiden name? He said, Lown. I said, did you marry a cousin? He said, yes. I said, so did I. <laughs> so we had all of these things that uh, sort of connected us uh, in a way. So, um, and we became good friends from that point on. With his wife, Louise, by the way. He uh, was the man with the awards, uh, but she was the force behind him. She was as much an activist as, uh, as he was as a matter of fact, he called her St. Louise. <laughs> so, um, Al and I got together and said, okay, now we have the permission. Now we have to work to name this bill. So we approached the Lewiston City Council and we got the approval. And um, with the Auburn Council, uh, they wanted to have a committee to propose different names and so on. And, and uh, I was pretty insistent on Dr. Lamb. I said, you, you wouldn't have thought of naming the South Bridge until this came up. So this is what it really should be. And the mayor there agreed. So, so with the vote of both councils, we had to go to the main legislature because it's a state bill. And I mean, a state uh, bridge. And so we had to get, we had to appear before the transportation committee and they had one reading, a second reading because both cities were supportive. Boom, boom, boom. And then uh, we had, uh, they came up, Dr. Lown and his wife and uh, Al and I, and we went to Governor Baldacci's office and he signed the bill naming the bridge. So uh, we were very, very pleased with that. Um, Dr. Lown, there was a, a gala in Boston at a large hotel. And this 
huge room was packed with people. It was a black tie affair. So Al and I, we rented tuxedos and, and we went, and my wife, and, uh, and uh, it was a wonderful affair. Governor Dukakis and his wife were there. Uh, Alan Dershowitz was there. Uh, Dr. Timothy Johnson, do you remember him on TV? Yeah. So he was there as well. So at, the, uh, at that gala, the, the video that you'll see this morning was developed for that event. So uh, it's, um, it's, it's really a, a, a wonderful tribute to him. It was also a part of a symphony there. I mean, it was a wonderful event. So one day, uh, I got a call from Dr. Lowne. He said, uh, you're going to get a letter from the mayor of Hiroshima inviting you to join Mayors for Peace. So sure enough, I got a letter from Mayor uh, Akiba. And um, the letter said, and I'll just read one paragraph, it says, I was so pleased to learn that you have honored Dr. Bernard Lau by naming a bridge after him. Many years ago, I studied and taught in the Boston, in the Boston area. I had a chance to collaborate with Dr. Lau. We have worked in parallel ever since. He thought that you would give favorable consideration to joining Mayors for Peace. And Dr. Uh, Lau sent me an email uh, and telling me about this Dr. Tadoshi Akiba. And it says, uh, he wrote, in regards to Tadoshi Tad, he called him Tad, Akiba, the present mayor of Hiroshima, I first met him in 1981. At the time, Tad was teaching at Tufts University, uh, and he was a charming, self-effacing, a uh, human being who became active in the doctor's anti-nuclear movement through nonviolent, uh, non nonviolent, uh, with uh, with the health profession. This is small friends. So. <laughs> he told me he had uh, he had come from Hiroshima, but he was totally Americanized. We had intermittent, but rare uh, contact during the years. You, uh, you can therefore imagine my surprise when New Year's Day, 1999, he telephoned me and informed me that he had just been elected mayor of Hiroshima. He wanted me to be among the first to know. He has been an exceptional mayor. Um, De uh, de democraticizing uh, Hiroshima, writing it, uh, ridding it of corruption, cronyism, and patronage. He revolutionized electronic uh, citizen participation in governments. He cleared, he cleared up the city environmentally. Above all, he provided dynamic leadership to the anti-nuclear struggle worldwide. Today, he is deservedly one of the most respected mayors in the world. And uh, so I responded to Dr. Uh, to Mayor Akiba, so uh, I'll, I'll skip that, other than I told him that Dr. Uh, Lau spoke very highly of him. And so, uh, this week, I got uh, an email from uh, Mayor Akiba, and he writes, Mayor Lauren Gilbert, Mr. Alan Harvey, and the fellow peace workers who have gathered in the Gendron Franco Center to rededicate yourselves to peace and no nuclear war. It is my honor and pleasure to send a message from Hiroshima on August 6th. Remember Dr. Bernard Lown and remaining the former 
and renaming the former South Bridge as the Bernard Lowne Peace Bridge is especially timely this year with the Ukrainian crisis, as the U Ukrainian crisis continues. As you know, at the height of the Cold War, Dr. Lown and Dr. Chazov, his co-founder of International Positions of Prevention for uh, Prevention of Nuclear War, collaborated in, in, um, to create a genuinely humanistic organization that would save humanity rather than continue to work in the framework of the East-West confrontation, confrontation. They deserve the Nobel Peace Prize, but also trigger the USS, the US-USSR summit in 1986 in Reykjavik, Iceland, when President Reagan and Secretary Gorbachev agreed to abandon all nuclear weapons they possessed. The military-industrial complex squashed their agreement. Still, the courage and insight of two leaders show us that we can abolish nuclear weapons and bring peace to Ukraine and other areas of the world that suffer from violence, injustice, plague, poverty, and other forms of tragedies and pains. We need to urge the government of the US and other nuclear weapon states, as well as Japan and other nuclear dependent states, to ratify the treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons. I believe that adopting the no first use policy by the nuclear weapon, uh, by the nuclear weapon states might be a more realistic intermediate goal that would naturally lead to ratification. Your gathering in Lewiston and march to the Peace Bridge is a precious symbol of and, and solid uh, message to all of us in the world who are working conscientiously and strenuously to build a peaceful world without nuclear weapons. Let us work together toward the common goal. Tadoshi Akiba, former mayor of Hiroshima. We also got, and, and I'll, 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 the letter is on the table there, but it's from the current mayor of Hiroshima, uh, and it's a more uh, generic letter, so because of the shortness of time. You, you see Veterans for Peace here. And I'm a member of Veterans for Peace, World Beyond War, and uh, Partners for Palestine. Well, uh, Howard Zinn, many of you must know Howard Zinn. He was a good friend of Dr. Lown. As a matter of fact, he wrote the foreword to his book. And um, so Veterans for Peace has an award that they give every year and it's called the Howard Zinn Lifetime Achievement Award. And, okay, on the table, uh, you'll see this photo. And at this time, this is uh, not too long before he passed. But, um, so I nominated him for the Lifetime Achievement Award, the Howard Zinn Lifetime Achievement Award and he being the friend of Howard Zinn. And so um, here he is on his patio in Massachusetts. You can see he's holding the, the award that uh, was presented to him. I miss Dr. Lown. I miss Louise Lown. And in the summer, um, Anne Lown, who was gonna be here today, but unfortunately she tested positive for COVID, so she couldn't, she told me she couldn't make it um, because she's quarantined. But um, we had some very enjoyable times at Sebago Lake. Al Harvey had a pontoon boat. And one day, we drove from one end of the lake to the other end, picked up Dr. and Mrs. Lown, and we went for a boat ride. And Dr. Lown, you was, you've probably seen pictures where he has, always has a camera. And he, um, and we went, 
And we went up the Songo River, and we even spotted a deer. And he took a photo, and he was, they were so pleased by that, by that ride. So um, at this point, I'll uh, turn it over back to Al. And um, I just want to thank you all for coming today to honor this man who, who became a good friend, this man and his lovely wife. Louise. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. I refer, I refer to Larry now as my bridge partner. <laughs> no, no pun intended. Uh, Congresswoman uh, Shelley Pingree was scheduled to be here today. Is she here? Yes or no? Uh, is Peggy Rotundo here? I do want to comment uh, the help that Peggy Rotundo gave. She chaired our uh, committee on the bridge, and she raised thousands of dollars for the monuments out here. If you haven't seen those monuments, I hope you will. I know we're going out there later. But you'll see all of the organizations that uh, Dr. Lown had besides uh, the one that we are talking about. 25,000. 25,000. At this time, we are going to uh, watch a 14-minute uh, video of Dr. Lau, and I believe we have a short video as well. Yeah. So I don't know if they're all set to do that. I think this is the point of Bernard Lau's story. Somebody must take the initiative. Wonderful. A couple of comments. Um, when Larry and I were in Boston at the uh, big festival of dinner we had down there, sitting at our table was the first man that Dr. Lown ever used the uh, cardio defibrillator on. The other comment I would make is when he moved to Lewiston from Lithuania, he spoke no English. And he had to, uh, he told me he learned English by reading the dictionary. He had a wonderful sense of humor. He said one time in class, he was reading a poem out loud, and it said something about sitting on the beach, and he said, sitting on the bitch. <laughs> Thank you all for coming to this dedication of this bridge, and as bridges link communities together, so does the work of Dr. Lowndes. How do you feel about all this? <laughs> I feel overwhelmed. How many people get a bridge named after them? Running out of air. <laughs> this bridge links us together and is now a peace bridge. And let us hope that <coughs> this message of today carries us to work together for the common good and I'll use the words of Dr. Lown, the common good of humankind. Small little people are the ones who make history. It's they who make history. They create the culture, they create the ambience, they create the values, and they create the energy to make change possible. It's not the big shots. It's the young people of man Frequently, young people are sort of, we want to see you but not hear you. You have nothing relevant to say. It's not true. It's their world, and we have screwed it up. You cannot go on television. We have, we have screwed up the world for the young people, and we owe them a debt. And we better begin to pay it. As a scientist, I know that we have the wherewithal, the resources to provide everybody in the world with Peace. life, liberty, and the right to pursue happiness. Beautiful. By the way, we're all going out to the monument following this for a moment of silence. And anyone who wants to speak at that time, if you put your hand up, I will acknowledge you. We're supposed to be taking a wreath out there as well.